Welcome, dear students. The current session is about language themes for the 21st century. I hope and expect by the end of this session, you will understand the current language themes and possible future strands of themes of English language. Well, my dear students, so much linguistic innovation and change has occurred through the times. And during, you know, the 20th century, uh, somewhere towards 1990s, in fact, that several of the assumptions that the linguists, that the researchers had about, you know, uh, language need um, or language change, all these assumptions are challenged. And for the first uh, 21st century, now actually we need to reconsider all these assumptions. In fact, the arrival of a global language, English, has altered the whole scene of the, the linguistic world um, in unprecedented ways where we do not find any such instances or examples in the history. English has taken over the whole world. Of course, a natural result of this is that with this, uh, you know, expansion and spread of English and with the process of it taking over the whole world linguistically, you know, there is a change um, in the set of attitudes and in the set of perspectives towards language. Whereas English has emerged as a strong language and has a lot of benefits and a lot of power associated with it, it has certain, you know, influences that we would say are not so positive in certain ways. In fact, many speech communities have begun to feel threatened by the situation, which can alter, which can change the character or the, you know, the you know, the, the nature of their local languages. Or in the worst case, even sometimes they feel threatened that, you know, this spread of English would result in the death of um, their local languages or in some cases, you know, in their national languages. In this context, several of the communities and countries are finding it necessary to introduce protective policies or at least to find ways of managing this situation. Um, uh, what I mean by that is to manage the impact or the influence of English language. You know, because this is more like a battle. This is more like, you know, fighting for survival. If English has so much of power and if it can take over the, um, all the domains of power, that is of politics, of administration, of education, of business, the natural result is the use of local languages or national languages in this context is barred. You know, it is restricted, which means, um, you know, their, their, when their use is reduced, of course, this would be a threat to their survival. It's not on the national level only, rather on the international level also certain measures are being taken. For example, you know, European Union um, or other organizations, international organizations like that, they are adopting certain far more sophisticated strategies that are to be implemented to safeguard, you know, the principle of language equivalence while recognizing the practical fact that virtually everybody speaks English. So, you know, it's more like a push and pull force, you know, both the forces are at work simultaneously. Whereas English is making its way everywhere in the world, you know, it is pushing back the other languages. The other languages are trying to compete. They are trying to survive. At one hand, there is a need to learn English because for all the practical and functional purposes, this is the lingua franca of the world. At the other hand, you know, there is a need for the recognition of the importance of local and national languages. So this push and pull force is at work simultaneously. So, you know, there are some, at the same time communities that want to exploit the opportunities of empowerment opened up by the availability of an international lingua franca. You know what I mean by that? If a particular country or a particular community or a particular state would not support the use of English, what is the result? 
the people are going to be deprived of all that empowerment that can come and that of course comes with in the current status of english language with the english language but you know if they they use that of course then it has um kind of a negative impact on the local languages so you know they are trying to find such measures where you know um they would resources at one hand they would use their resources to train people in using english language they would teach people how to use english language simultaneously they would try they would make efforts for the survival of their national and local languages an english language dimension at senior levels of management can be noticed all across the globe if we see um senior management happening um everywhere you would notice the language for that today is english if you look at the tourist potential uh, it is maintained uh, by incorporating english language you know uh, tourism cannot flourish in any country uh, in today's world if english is not incorporated in that system there are certain issues that are related to this learners and teachers of english language both have to face certain challenges one of the challenges the greatest challenge i would say is to to get to grips with a rapidly diversifying language what i mean by that is you know today it's not english language only the english language only it is world englishes where there are so many varieties of english so you know for the teachers in the process of teaching and for the learners in the process of learning you know to strike a balance between you know these um, these varieties of english um that are related to the identities of certain communities and nations um at one hand and the standardized uh english language at the other hand to strike a balance between the two uh, is a real challenge in the in the educational systems of the world today uh secondly you know this process of change has been radically affected by the the arrival of internet which has uh, uh, which has provided unprecedented connectivities to the world um that were never ever experienced by the people in the past think of netspeak community you know um it has connected people um sitting here in pakistan you can connect to means literally anybody in the world in any corner of the world so here we need to consider that what are the language themes of the of the coming times what are the language themes for the 21st century and keeping those themes those issues those challenges in mind we as a global community need uh, to establish fresh policies and strategies teachers uh, need to find um, that finding all you know a uh, ways of how to give exposure to various varieties of english various forms of english simultaneously you know while retaining a balance with the standard varieties how to do all that examination systems also need to be um you know um to be um, revisited and seen how you know you know all this can be incorporated a respectful attention to the regional accent and dialects both nationally and internationally needs to be given you know um there were the times when it was thought all right this is the received pronunciation the british standard pronunciation so this is the right pronunciation the correct pronunciation or this is the general american pronunciation so this is the only correct pronunciation and the other varieties were not um, given that privilege they were not considered of that equal status but today the world has changed um and the perspective on english uh, language has changed uh, this has emerged as an important theme to be considered for the 21st century as far as legal status and the system of documents the issues of copyright 
uh, for the creative work, etc., are concerned. Again, this is one of the major themes for the 21st century where certain considerations need to be made because the, the processes of translations are also, um, you know, um, are happening um, very speedily. In fact, my dear students, in the 21st century, it is the responsibility of governments and of international organizations and of philanthropists and artists and of activists to strike a balance and to, to you know, look at the English language and the English language as a world language and also as world Englishes um, as something uh, which needs to be considered from new perspectives and, you know, uh, keeping in mind the needs of tomorrow. 